much for your time tonight and special thanks to Grupo Parada and the American Hispanic Health uh, Executives here who are able to join us tonight as well as the partners. It is my pleasure to share some of our digital insights from Google tonight. Um, my team at Google specifically covers the U.S. Hispanic audience and we're focused on helping our advertisers, agencies, and strategic partners reach the U.S. Hispanic digital audience across our platforms, so Google Search, YouTube, um, various mobile applications, and so on. I was very excited to see that mobile made the, the cut tonight. Um, mobile is an incredibly important part of what we do, at least at Google, and I know beyond as well. Um, it's one of the reasons that we bought Motorola. It's one of the reasons that we've updated our advertising platforms. And it's one of the key parts to keeping our advertisers and our users happy. Um, I want to talk tonight a little bit about total market trends, as well as what we see in the Hispanic space specifically. Um, but before we do that, I'd like to do a quick audience survey. Um, please raise your hand if you currently own a mobile phone. Okay, so I think that's 100%. <laughs> um, how many of you checked your mobile phone before you came here tonight? Okay, take a look around. I mean, that, that is like 90, 95%. Um, and last question, how many of you checked your mobile at least a couple times during the day today? Three times, five times? 25 times, maybe more. <laughs> I know I do. Um, so I want to just kind of keep that in mind as context for tonight. Those are the mobile moments we're talking about. Even in this room that holds 150 people or so, imagine those mobile moments happening several times a day across 53 million Hispanics in the US. So. So the digital landscape has been changing a lot in recent years. Um, but what's interesting is that human behavior is fundamentally the same. We're still searching for information. We're still trying to connect with each other. We're still shopping for deals and comparing prices. Um, and we're looking for answers and asking for information. Um, that behavior has not changed. What has changed? The backdrop. Devices are really what's generating the shift in behavior. The fact that you can be connected at all times, anytime, anywhere, is the primary driver in this digital landscape. And what's perhaps most important is that we transition seamlessly between these devices at all times of the day. This is something completely unprecedented. We like to think about this in kind of four or five different factors or layers at Google. Um, first and foremost, content. We search for everything. I'm sure even reflecting on your own recent searches, there's quite a variety. Um, while it might be something straightforward like the weather or news or your sports scores, it might also be something like comparing health insurance policies, looking for your local doctor, um, trying to find your nearest emergency room, things like that. Another factor we look at is time. Um, no longer are we searching kind of only during the day at our desks at work. We're on the go, we are out and about, and we're seeing searches reflect that, coming in really late at night, early in the morning, while you're out for lunch, and more. In addition to content and time, we also think about devices themselves, both mobile devices, tablets, uh, desktop, notebooks, plus things like Google Glass coming soon. Um, so we see a lot of activity across devices. The last thing we think about is geography. So where are people searching from? Uh, you might be looking up locations in various states. Maybe you're traveling. Maybe you're local and just want to find the nearest movie theater. The fact that we can see, the fact that we are searching for everything from many different places is of critical importance to this space. And so what we like to think about these moments at Google are these are the moments that matter. These are the moments where you as advertisers, as public health professionals, these are the moments that you can connect with consumers. And it might be something simple like searching for pizza, but it might also be moments where you're looking for a healthcare provider or when you're looking for an emergency room or when you're looking to plan your future medical care. 
these moments of relevancy are key to connecting and communicating with your audience. Looking back on our small room example here, millions of people having these moments several times a day, that's billions of moments of opportunity. That's a massive, massive chance to connect with your audience. And while this context does create some complexity, we acknowledge that, uh, it also creates new opportunities. It enables you to speak to your users right at the moment of relevancy, whether you are looking for someone whether you're looking to advertise to someone who is searching for a particular service or raise awareness around a new offering, this context can be leveraged to reach your audience. And this relevancy in particular comes across these four factors. Devices and language are particularly important for the Hispanic audience, and that's what we would like to focus on today. So when we think about what we know now for the Hispanic space. We'll speak broadly here for a moment. Google published a study in 2010 called The Four Truths About Hispanics. It was a custom OTX study, and even three years ago, we knew point three. We knew that Hispanics were huge mobile users and that there was a lot of mobile engagement with this audience. What we didn't really know was how important it was. So many of you in the audience are familiar with the fact that Hispanics over-index in everything mobile. Hispanics are more likely to own high-end mobile devices. They're more likely to um, download apps. They're, Hispanics are twice as likely to um, use a tablet. These are things that are pretty readily available via third-party data. And when it comes to what the numbers look like, if that doesn't sound familiar, um, there's over 33 million Hispanic mobile subscribers that are 13 or older. That represents 14% of the total mobile population in the U.S., so a very significant part. Um, roughly 57% of Hispanics own a smartphone, making Hispanics 24% more likely than general market to own a high-end mobile device. When it comes to what Hispanics are doing on mobile phones, the vast majority of time, 74 74% is dedicated to mobile media usage. So looking on your mobile browser, using an app, um, only 10% of activity on phones is dedicated to voice, and roughly 16% of activity on mobile phones is dedicated to SMS or text. So over the course of about a year, uh, we at Google started to get really good questions from our advertisers and our clients and our strategic partners and the community. Things like, what are Hispanics searching for online? Are Hispanics searching in Spanish or English? At what frequency? Where are Hispanics spending their time online? And these were great questions. And so third party data, like we just saw, is incredibly useful to triangulate and to get a lay of the land. But we also wanted to use some of our own data to understand what Hispanic search trends look like. And when we looked at this data, what we saw was that mobile is an absolute must for the Hispanic discovery search pathway. Um, everyone, I think, in the advertising industry has previously treated mobile as a nice to have, something kind of incremental, maybe you put a little bit of initiative behind it. But what we saw is that Hispanic is no longer, an, uh, <coughs> Hispanic mobile media is no longer a nice to have, it's an absolute yeah. must. So what did we actually see when we did this study? What we did at a high level is we looked at Spanish language searches from our own data logs at an aggregate level between 2010 and 2012. And we grouped them in various ways. And then we measured the growth between those two years. So two things to take away from this graph. Um, first and foremost, Hispanics are searching more than ever more than ever across all devices. This is both mobile, desktop, and tablet, and it's very helpful in understanding where the growth is coming from in terms of content. So one thing that really stands out and that we would expect is that online communities grew 213% over those two years. Those are things like Facebook, Twitter, um, chat rooms, mobile forums, blogs, etc. 
Um, that really speaks to the desire to be connected, and we also acknowledge that this was a fantastic period of growth for online community-related topics and searches. So while we would expect that, what we didn't expect was quite as much growth in these niche audience, uh, niche topics. So for example, health-related searches in Spanish grew 195% between 2010 and 2012. That's phenomenal growth, um, even in the tech industry. We also see local searches, which is relevant for people looking for nearby services. They usually have a geographic modifier in their search grew over 175%, um, so an increased focus on geo-targeting, uh, as well as things like news, travel, entertainment, sports. Virtually every category for a Spanish language search grew over 100% during those two years. So when we wanted to compare this to English, um, we had to take a little bit of a look here and see, you know, Spanish language search growth is great, but how does this compare to English? So if we look here, we can see the blue bars represent English growth in searches, and the green bars represent Spanish growth in searches. And we can see that across several categories, Spanish searches actually grew faster than English searches. <coughs> so in this case, Spanish language healthcare searches grew 38% faster than English language healthcare searches between 2010 and 2012. We see similar uh, trend distribution for categories like food and drink, beauty and personal care, local shopping, and so on. So the next logical question is, in addition to that growth, where are these searches coming from? What devices are these searches coming from? What we see here in 2012 is that for all Spanish language searches, 49% came from a mobile device. The remainder came from a mix of desktop and tablet searches, the majority of which uh, would be desktop. So when we think about this, out of every 100 Spanish language searches, 49 came from a mobile phone. That's a lot. Um, how does that compare to general market or English language searches? E-marketer data suggests somewhere between 13 to 16 percent of general market searches come from a mobile device. Um, what that really means is that Hispanics are two to three times more likely to search on their mobile phone than an English-speaking user. Um, this obviously would be a critical part of your marketing or outreach strategy to include mobile, given this strong over-index. It's also important to evaluate what type of device these searches are coming from. Uh, without turning this into a giant Android commercial, um, <laughs> We do see that um, Android is the number one device or operating system purchased with uh, Hispanic consumers, followed by the iPhone, um, second or iOS systems, I should say. Um, we think there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, you know, it's extremely customizable. It's an open system, so anyone can develop for it. Um, there's a variety of brands and contracts. You can go month to month. Um, that was not the case with all competitor high-end mobile devices when they first came out, which may have influenced adoption. Um, Android's also available across all carriers at a variety of price points, and it's used globally, which is important for this audience. Um, when it comes to distribution, we see roughly 70 to 80 percent of Spanish language searches coming from an Android on mobile. Um, and what does that really mean for you as advertisers and consumers and users of these platforms? Um, basically, 2013 is going to be the point of inflection. So Kleiner Perkins data suggests in the green and yellow bars, mobile smartphones and tablets are going to surpass desktop and notebook PC activations. And that's consistent with what we see as well. Um, mobile smartphone and tablet activations are expected to increase over time with notebook PCs and desktops tending to stay, you know, with relatively moderate growth. This really has two implications. Um, first and foremost, if you are interested in capturing the mobile audience, it's important to optimize your mobile experience. There are ways to kind of optimize your mobile landing page so it loads more quickly. 
Um, and you also will have a better user experience and better engagement if you have a mobile-friendly site. Uh, I'm sure we've all looked at mobile sites that are not mobile optimized and you have to expand and scroll down and it's hard to find things. Um, that's a critical part to having a good mobile experience. The second thing is if you're considering developing an application, it's critical to kind of keep in mind what type of devices Hispanics are using. So um, Android and iPhone are the two market leaders for Hispanic consumers. They do have diff different operating systems, so different app development is required. So that's one thing to keep in mind is when you're developing your app to consider parallelizing development of both. So in addition to looking at kind of content and device, we wanted to look at our own search platform. Um, and this is something we've long suspected but finally confirmed, is that Spanish is the second most searched language in the US after English. It's not Mandarin, it's not Cantonese, it's not Russian, it's Spanish. And it's Spanish across all devices. So after English, Spanish is the most popular for mobile, tablet, and desktop. <coughs> not to take you too far back into childhood here, but you can see that this is a tricycle, and the tricycle is missing something important. It's missing one-third of its parts. Um, basically, what we did is we looked at how many people were searching in Spanish and what percent of the time they were searching only in Spanish. Um, as you all know, bilingualism is a very important part of uh, the debate and discussion here. Um, what we found is that of all Spanish language searchers, 35% search only in Spanish 100% of the time. So if you think about it this way, um, within your Spanish language search universe, if 50% or so of your searches are mobile and 35% of those people are searching only in Spanish, that's 17% of your total opportunity. What this means is that there's still a critical component to speaking to your audience in language. Roughly 35% of Hispanics are searching in Spanish only, and you wouldn't want to exclude them. Um, the remainder of those search both Spanish and English queries, and sometimes Spanglish, as we've seen. <laughs> so looking at mobile specifically, what are some of the top searches among the Hispanic audience? So here we're looking at Spanish language searches just on mobile phones. And it turns out the top five categories create almost half of Spanish mobile search volume. You can see here, um, socially related things pop quite uh, early on, so arts and entertainment, online communities, as well as reference and kind of internet telecom searches. Now, if you're an advertiser or consumer and you don't see your area covered here, don't fret. <laughs> Um, what this means is that if you are able to incorporate lifestyle-related content into your awareness campaigns, that's a very, very good strategy for reaching this audience. If you have a spokesperson from the arts and entertainment community, if you have reference resources in Spanish, also one of the top five, um, or if you have kind of partnerships you can leverage, you'll get additional traffic volume if you can include some of these types of terms in your in your builds. Unsurprisingly, we see that these are also the areas of high over-index for Hispanics. So online communities up threefold, that's no surprise. We have seen consistently that Hispanics love to share and connect and are incredibly social online. And also reference, so this would include things like medical references, language references, Wikipedia in Espanol, things like that, um, also up very, very high. Now, when it comes to categories and device types, we wanted to show just a couple examples and discuss rationale behind each. So looking here on the leftmost side, uh, online communities and health, we see the majority of traffic on these terms come in from mobile devices. So when people are searching in Spanish for healthcare information, their searches tend to come more from a mobile device than from desktop or tablet. Um, it's a little bit different story for computers and electronics or travel, 
what we see there is that those are a little bit bigger ticket items. Maybe you need to have your friends or family buy in while you're purchasing kind of high, high ticket, big ticket items. For food and drink and shopping and in general entertainment, we see the highest activation or highest number of searches come in on tablets for those categories. And to some extent, we think that makes sense. Um, tablets are being used in the evening while you're watching your favorite show. You're having a multi-screen experience. <laughs> um, you know, healthcare in particular is something kind of interesting to think about from a mobile perspective, given that it is somewhat personal and somewat sensitive information many times. Um, mobile is the one thing you have a lot of control over, a lot of privacy. That may not be the case if you have a shared desktop at home in a multi-generational household, or you know, if you're sharing your tablet with your spouse or children. Um, so this really speaks to the importance of healthcare searches coming from mobile. When it comes to kind of takeaways and next steps, um, there's really four things to kind of keep in mind. Um, we at Google are definitely biased, but we believe in the power of mobile. Um, that being said, it's also important to diversify your campaigns. So to have some coverage on desktop, tablet, and of course mobile. Um, we also secondly recommend an always on strategy. People are searching for a lot of different things at a lot of different times of days. Make sure you can be found. Campaign changes are underway. Um, basically at Google we have created uh, something called enhanced campaigns, which streamlines some of the factors we talked about for geography, time of day, et cetera. Um, and I can answer any questions about that in great detail. <laughs> um, and lastly, you know, we recommend leveraging your own brand and customer insights for best success. Um, we as Google can definitely provide a platform and insights into how people are using devices, but you know your customers and your patients and your clients better than anyone else. If I were to leave you with five key takeaways, these would be it. Spanish searches are growing. Literally every single category for Spanish language searches grew over 100% in the last two years. Overall, mobile growth is outpacing desktop, 49% of all of those Spanish searches coming from a mobile device. Uh, it's important to reach Hispanics in Spanish. Um, we see that higher engagement and activation result from literally speaking language. Uh, incorporating lifestyle terms is very important. Those five kind of top mobile categories we looked at, make sure to leverage any partnerships or endorsements or spokespeople you have or medical references you can offer. And lastly, continue to let your customer insights inform your mobile strategy. That is all I have for now. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions if time permits. Uh, or get a beer with you guys later. Any questions? Yes? Questions? Over there. Sure. Give yeah, for a moment, to, uh, if you could speak loudly. Yeah. So, <coughs> in terms of your mobile strategy, do you feel like there's one you know, repeat execution or something that's more effective than others? Is it as simple as click and call, or is something else you see in the marketplace in terms of getting the response and having people take action on what they're saying? Great question. Um, so f just to make sure everyone could hear, uh, the question was around what's the most effective uh, type of execution for advertising. I think what we've seen in the Hispanic space for mobile is that click to call is extremely successful, especially if you have a Spanish language call center or Spanish language representatives. Um, if that's not the case, we see very, very high performance with mobile display and mobile search. Um, if you're looking for clicks or kind of registration on site. Search is great because it shows user intent. Um, and anytime someone types in your company or your condition, you can show an ad related to that. Um, you know, if you're looking for kind of branding and awareness, our in-app advertising has uh, performed very well, very high reach. Sure. Thank you. If you have additional questions for Kelsey, you'll be able to ask those questions during networking. Thank you. Sure. And Some important takeaway points to have regarding Google is the four truths that Kelsey mentioned. Hispanics are high speed internet users. Hispanics are social media shoppers. 
Hispanics maximize mobile media. Online is the Hispanic GPS to stores. What I found interesting is that we know about 85% of social media, digital media users fall within the age range of 18 to 49. Now the US Census has that the number of Hispanics that, aren't, that are uninsured within the age range of 25 and 34% are high digital media users. Um, excuse me, 61% of them, they are uninsured and they fall within the age range of 25 and 34 years of age. So that's very interesting about Google telling us about the high usage of Hispanics. So thank you. Now I'm going to talk, talk to you about Marcelo. Uh, Marcelo focuses on connecting healthcare institution with Hispanic consumers in the US. He uses web metrics and the constant optimization of digital marketing campaigns to meet the culturally specific needs of the Hispanic consumers. Marcelo is currently the chairman of the Technology Committee of the Association of Hispanic Healthcare Executives and has been working with AHE for about five years now. Marcelo? I'll be very brief, I promise. It's coming. <laughs> well, thank you all for attending. Thanks, Miriam, for, for the recap. I just wanted to, um, to take all these in perspective. And uh, I want you to take a look at the picture this is, um, this is in Queens. It was taken at a normal day, any day. And I want you to look and pay closely attention to what's going on here. What's going on here? What's going on there? <laughs> so we've been hearing that we are social, that we are mobile, that we're local. So we, we, we knew we are social, we are Hispanic, of course. You, we, we threw great parties, but we didn't know that how much, how much of that information is gonna, is, is, is right now, how the information is being searched, how, how we Latinos are, are in, constant, in constant search of information. So then, right now, what we're looking at is there is, there's a huge number of Hispanics, online, digital, and uh, that they spend almost the same amount of time on TV than online. But here's the interesting part. This is where it gets everything interesting that only 5% of the whole budget goes to online. So imagine again, you have, you have, um, you have an, uh, a population that has spent almost the same time in two media, but advertisers, companies are just putting 6% of the whole budget to online. So that, my friends, really creates a huge opportunity for those savvy marketers who can take advantage of, of this fact that, that it's pretty much telling us that companies are not putting enough money resources where, where, where the population is growing. Now, healthcare is not an exception. And uh, of course, there is uh, there is um, there are going to be navigators, independent brokers, online portal, call centers. That's the final step. But we need to bring the searches. We need to bring the people to these places. 
So digital is not uh, is not something that is going to that is going to affect the other medium. It's a it's a it's it's gonna empower those the other media campaigns to to take users to take action. But how do you make them take action? So first of all, digital media provides two opportunities. First of all, the the